started recording. Okay, right fine. Now. So this is a getting ready for nursery webinar. We have about 22 slides to get through. It's going to take about half an hour. Um, Han, if you can mute yourself now, that would be great. Um, and then when um, there will be pauses for us to have a little bit of a chat. But if you want to put anything in the chat, that means typing things in. Um, Hannah will be monitoring the chat. Um, and she can let me know if anyone wants to ask a question. But there are moments in this presentation when I pause to just take time to reflect and take any questions because there's quite a lot of information in this presentation. OK, so the very first slide is the aims of this webinar. So the first thing we're going to do today is just reflect on how you feel about your child starting nursery. This is important because life's so busy and it's important to just take a moment to think about perhaps your first day at school or your first day of nursery. If you've got any memories around that, were they good, were they bad? Um, so we're going to be doing that on the next slide. Um, we're also going to be thinking about how your child might be feeling about starting nursery. We're going to be thinking about how to make this transition as smooth as possible because it is a big transition for our children. We're going to be thinking about what skills they're going to need in order to successfully transition to nursery and be as independent as possible. And we're going to be thinking about how you can collaborate and work with your school with the school or nursery to help prepare your child and understand and think about what are the types of information would be helpful to share with the nursery or school before you go and ongoingly. And you can see there I'm using the word nursery and school interchangeably because um, some children would be starting at a nursery attached to a school and some children would be just starting in an independent nursery. OK. So the first thing we're going to do is just have a little think about um, what our first memories of school were, or any memories of school, were they good or were they bad? I don't know if Maria, if you can unmute yourself, I don't know if you feel brave enough to share um, any of your memories of school. Mm. So, yeah, I, I remember that I was always ex excited about it because I, I really like um, I really like studying and really liked I will I've always been like that. That's so great. so it was something even though it wasn't like I, I cannot say that all the time was a pleasure to go to school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But at least at the big be the beginnings were always very exciting because it was like something new, starting different year, learning mm -hmm. new things. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so yeah, it was okay. just always like that. Like that's the really positive. And without you knowing it, unconsciously you will be send because you're feeling so positive. You positive for you. You will be giving those positive vibes to your child. So that's really really good. And and I wonder if you can just say what your hopes are for him starting nursery school in September. So I, I'm definitely sure he will gonna learn yeah. a lot of things. I mean, he will he will gonna start to to have a lot more more structured learning. Yeah. Than what I'm giving him at home, of course, and yes. he has he he will learn to play in a group, not only just as a one person or just only with me, meeting new people, meeting new kids, like socializing more. Yes. Let's yes. say. And uh, uh, I am sure he will start to use uh, English more. Because for the moment for him, uh, we, we are to, uh, we are originally from Romania, right? So it's kind of a bit of mixture be for him now between English and Romanian. Mm -hmm. We speak with him only in Romanian at home. Uh, 
but of course, uh, so he he's getting English as well. Uh, just sorry, sorry, I just need to give them an attention. Sorry. Yeah, don't worry. You did a great job of explaining there your hopes, and I think you're absolutely right that um, socialization is a really big part of starting nursery, and and we can think today about what we can do to prepare our children so that they're in the best position to want to socialize with other children the same age as them. I'm just going to move on. So this next slide is thinking about who are the key people that can help make this big transition really smooth. And I like to think of it as a triangle. So you've got parents, the child and the nursery school. And today's presentation is almost divided up into three sections where we think about what we can do as parents to prepare ourselves and, and, and prepare our children and what we can do to really help our children to prepare and how we can work with the nursery to make sure that it's a really successful and positive transition. Um, Hannah, are you able to admit, um, I think her name was Halima. I saw someone just come up there. Yeah, I've just admitted Salma. Okay, lovely. Salma, okay, lovely. Good morning, Salma. I can't see you, um, but welcome. Um, I'm only three slides in, so you haven't missed much. Okay. So here are just some of the feelings that you may have about your child starting nursery. So I have to say, I, I have two children the primary age children. So I've done this transition myself and I remember probably feeling every single one of these emotions <laughs> at some point. And I think that it's really normal to feel a whole range of different different emotions and to also swing in between those emotions. So I remember feeling quite sad at the loss of particularly my last daughter when it's whether it's your first, second or third, but just that you know, is a chapter ending and, a, and, a, and, ex, and an exciting new chapter starting. I remember being excited for all the new things that they're going to learn, a bit like you've just described there, Maria. Um, it's definitely a loss. It's definitely that feeling that um, they are moving away from you. I also remember feeling quite relieved that um, I was actually going to get a little bit of time to myself. And I remember thinking a lot about what I'm going to do with that precious time. And I remember planning loads of stuff and not being able to do half of it. Um, I remember feeling guilty because I was, um, you know, in some ways looking forward to having that time to myself. But that made me feel quite guilty. And quite normally, I was feeling quite anxious about were they going to settle OK? Were they going to cry on the first day? Was I going to cry on the first day? And all of that is quite overwhelming. And there's other emotions there like bored, regretful, curious about what they're going to learn, um, jealous that that's an interesting emotion, jealous that um, someone else was going to spend time with my child. But overall, I suppose I was feeling quite positive and I knew that this was an exciting next step in my child's development. And I'm wondering whether anyone wants to say anything about the emotions that I've just raised there and whether they can relate to any of them. If anyone yeah. can relate. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Yes, yes, it is uh, like that. So I, I've been experiencing some of them uh, when I have had him uh, for that two months in a nursery. Yeah. Uh, I was super excited. For one side, I was a bit more relaxed because he really enjoyed from the beginning. So there was no crying, no, like he was very willing to go because wow. he's enjoying kids and he's enjoying playing. He's enjoying people around him. So he, he integ integrated there very well. So there was no crying for him when I was leaving him there. So for that, I was like, we tried to do our, our best, but it wasn't possible. So, but even, even though, um, yeah, I can relate like I was feeling like 
other people taking care of him. Even yeah. I knew I knew that he's learning. He's uh, in a good place, so it's not something like to really be worried about. And he wasn't crying when I let well, I was letting him. So I think he will gonna be the same in September. I think he will not gonna change because he's like this every single day. So we go to the park, we go to the children's centers and he's just running and he's just going around the kids. He's trying like to to have interaction with the kids. Mm -hmm. So it's not just only on his own. Yes. So, yeah, yeah, these this are feelings which most of them I've been through and mm -hmm. I think I'm going to feel uh, <laughs> All of them anxious, anxious, yeah. <laughs> a little it's bit. a mixed bag, isn't it? And yes. I think the thing yes. is, is that you might feel one feeling at the beginning, and then as time progresses, like even a month down the line, you start feeling another feeling. So it's um it's 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 a bit of a roller coaster, I think, when your child first starts nursery or school. And it takes several months for things to settle down and for everyone to get used to the routine. Yeah. But thank you for those reflections, Maria. That's really helpful. Yeah, I'll just pause here in case anyone else wanted to reflect at all on any of the things that we've just talked about. Okay, I will move on. Okay, so as we've just talked about, it's a huge moment of letting go of your child, particularly if you have been the main carer and with them 24 7 so it's a big moment in in their life and um the next couple of slides are thinking about how we how we how we mentally prepare ourselves and what um structures we can put in place to make it as successful and as smooth as possible and the first one is is a pretty um basic one really that and 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 it, but essential one that it's important to be to be on time to know the start time um because they can hugely vary from nursery to nursery so to make sure that you're well prepared for that first day and that you're on time and you know um what the routine might look like and um and when you go to drop them off, the second point is about saying goodbye to your child. Sometimes we have this feeling that we might try and sneak off um, without saying goodbye. But actually, the research shows us that it's really important that your child understands and knows that you will be leaving them and that you say goodbye to them. And, you know, it was good to hear that Maria's son went in positively, but sometimes that ha doesn't doesn't happen and children can be tearful and then that can trigger you to become upset. So just to be mindful of that. Um, but we would always say, do, do say goodbye to your child. Don't don't treat. Let them know that you're coming back. Um, and as it says there, be clear with them if someone else is grandma's picking them up or like the third point says, if you've got a child minder, because you may be thinking about going back to work, if someone new is picking up your child, make sure that you've prepared them well in advance. Um, and the, the, the fourth point, be prepared to stay a little longer at the nursery on their first day. I mean, I find that different nurseries have different setups around the fir that first couple of days of settling in. Um, I remember my first child, I was actually allowed to stay on site in a separate room, um, and which was really reassuring for me because um, that first child, the transition was was quite tricky. Um, and I was allowed to be in, in, in another room and make sure that she was OK. Um, but with my second child, I was just expected to just drop her off and go. Um, so see what the nursery says about the arrangements. But the, the most important thing is, which is that last point on the slide, is no matter how you are feeling inside, really try your best to feel, to, to present as cheerful and positive in front of your child, because your child is a mirror up to your emotions. So if you are feeling quite stressed and anxious and tearful, they will pick up on that. And as much as you can, um, try and wait 
um, go around the corner and have a little cry. But in that first, those first couple of days, really try and be as positive as you can about this new and exciting transition. So when you're picking them up at the end of the day, um, try and try and show that you've been interested in their day by asking them what they've done. Um, I know that I used to say to my children um, to get them talking, I used to ask them, what, what did you eat? What did you eat today? Because that used to be an easier question for them to answer than just by saying, well, what did you do today? But some children will want to talk about their day and, and some children won't want to talk about their day. And that's and that's all OK. And some children will want to come out and tell you straight away what they've done. But some children, um, you might get some snippets further on in the day or at bedtime. So if they don't want to talk as soon as they come out, that's fine. Um, the second bullet point is about starting this communication with with the staff at your nursery because that is key so really um thinking about how you can build that communication up with them they will probably have some some transition sessions where you can go in and get to know um, the teachers and the LSAs and the professionals in the nursery. So I would definitely um, make use of that if they're offering that to you. And different nurseries offer different things. I know one of my children, we had a home visit, which was really useful before my child started nursery. Um, most schools have some, most nurseries have some sort of system by which they will try and get to know the child a little bit beforehand. And so it's important to um, tell the nursery a little bit about your child and they will want to know. So a little bit about their likes, their dislikes, what languages are spoken at home, that sort of thing. And that third point is about just continuing to make make sure that you keep an open dialogue between you and the nursery environment, because having that collaborative approach is really important at the beginning, but also ongoingly. And this this slide, as we've talked about, is really making sure that you look after yourself because as I said, this is a big transition for your child, but it is a big transition for you also. Being aware of how you feel, how you might react, particularly in that first week, is really important. And if you feel like you're someone who might get upset, maybe bring a, a friend along, a family member along to give you that emotional support. And also thinking about what you might do with your time. You might want to go and have, especially in that first day, you might want to just go and and have a coffee with someone who who you know well. Um, but it's important to look after yourself because if you are feeling positive and hopeful about this transition, that will come across to your child. Okay, I'll pause there for any questions about looking after yourself. Okay, anything in the chat, Tana? No, there's nothing. There's okay. nothing in the chat. Okay. Hello, is there a question? Hi, no, Han. Thank you. Yeah, no, no question. Yeah, thank you. Okay, fine. Thank you for letting me know. So um this next section of the presentation is thinking about how you can prepare your child before they start nursery and i wonder if anyone has got any thoughts about what they might need to think about in terms of preparing their child for nursery does anyone have any thoughts about what they might need to help their child do And just pause here. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry. It's yeah. uh, I'm Ria. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we are uh, in this moment, we are in the process of preparing him of, um, uh, for we do training, potty training. Yeah. So th this is actually my main focus for him to to learn before he goes to nursery. Yeah. Uh, he's not really interesting at all, so he doesn't show any signs for okay. the moment. And mm -hmm. so he's still he's already three years old. 
but uh, we are t we try. So we are in that process of preparing him uh, to be able to go toilet by himself. And uh, uh, what more we are preparing for? No, I, actually for me, it's that one is the main the main focus. Yeah. And, and to be fair, um, I'm going round, I'm just going to move on to the next slide. I'm going round to lots of getting ready for nursery sessions. And you are, Maria, certainly not alone in that uh focus nearly every child and parent um that i'm seeing toileting comes up and i want to reassure everyone that um many children are not fully toilet trained before they go to nursery um it's a really common thing that uh, we're we that we talk about and can help parents with um Hannah, did, did you did you say that there was a toilet training webinar coming up this week? Yes, so Friday morning and afternoon, um, there will be a toilet training webinar. So at 10 o'clock on Friday or at two o'clock um, and they're both on the flyer. If you receive the flyer about the um, getting ready for nursery webinars, so this one was on it and the toilet training is on Friday. So yeah, it'd be great if you wanted to join it. That's on Zoom. Um, if you don't have the details, um, Maria, I think you've got my email address. I can email it to you. Yeah, I've seen I've seen on the leaflet. Yeah, on the okay. email. it is. Uh, uh, there are all three sessions there. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, so. that's great, Maria. So if you can attend that, that because Toilet training is a pretty big subject um, in itself, which I was only going to briefly touch on today because, as I say, it's it's there's lots of ins and outs to it. But I think the key thing is not to worry because lots of children are not going to school fully toilet trained or not to nursery toilet trained. But I think starting the process is important. So and, and the nursery staff will, will appreciate if parents have um, at least started the process, which would be, you know, having a potty at home or having a toilet seat at home, um, using pull ups, showing children the, root, the, the routine of going to the toilet. So even if they're not fully dry, that they understand um, sitting on the toilet, maybe flushing the toilet, um, washing their hands, drying their hands. So they understand some and can do some elements of the toilet training, the toilet routine themselves. So that's something to really work on before they they start. But as I said, it's it's super common. Nursery staff are used to children that are not fully toilet trained. And that's something that, that most nurseries are happy to work with you um, to get your child fully toilet trained. But uh, as Hannah said, there'll be a webinar um, with lots more details about it. So other things that we need to think about in terms of trying to get your child independent is is. The first little picture is all their belongings. So making sure that your child recognises their own things, they recognise um, their own coat, their bottle, their snacks. Um, Labelling their stuff is really important. I know staff are really appreciative if they don't have 25 identical jumpers, particularly if you're going to a school nursery where they often have to wear the school sweatshirt. It's really good if you can um, label everything and, um, and that your child is aware of their own personal belongings. The other thing is, is just practising beforehand they may not be able to do it, but being able to take off certain key items of clothing or their shoes, um, big thing that they work on in the autumn term of every nursery I've ever been to is getting their coat, just doing their coat up or taking their coat off and hanging it on a peg. So I know staff are really appreciative um, if, if parents can work on that at home and being mindful of making sure that their clothes are accessible. So it, we wouldn't expect necessarily for all children to be able to do buttons at this point. So you might want to think about coats that have got zips and shoes that have got Velcro because we wouldn't be expecting them to do shoelaces at this point. But anything that you can do at home to help them to be more independent in their personal um, with their personal belongings and their personal skills is, is really, really good. 
And the other little picture there is about um, food and, and, and snack time. Um, and that's about getting them used to um, perhaps eating healthy snacks at lunchtime and getting used to drinking water because in all nurseries now um, expect children to come with a bottle of water and really only have fruit snacks at snack time. So getting your children used to those kind of healthy snacks if they're not used to them. And, and also if they're staying for a full day, just keep practicing using um, a fork and a knife and a spoon. Um, they're still learning with this. Many children still can't fully um, cut food up by themselves and nursery staff will help them. But the more you practice at home, the more independent they can be. Um, and I'm just looking what's underneath that little. What's next? I can't move the little. Um, box I can see can I help some can I have some help please but I can't see what's underneath oh I see praise their efforts oh yes so um whenever you see them doing anything that is building their independence it's really a nice idea to praise them for that and be quite specific in your praise so say things like oh, I can see that you've done a really good job at zipping up your coat, or I can see that you're doing a really good job of stabbing your sausages with your fork. So they understand the skill that they should be developing. And the last thing on this page that I haven't talked about is actually uh, helping your children um, have some words to be able to ask for help. Because usually if they've been with you 24 seven, Often you are predicting or you can predict when they may need help. So they actually don't often need to ask. But when they go into a situation where they're with unfamiliar adults, you know, they don't really know them. Um, the adults don't don't know your child's particular likes and dislikes or what they they may need help with. Um, it's important that your child has the language to be able to say, can I have some help, please? So if you can practice doing that at home, that will be really helpful. Okay. So the other part to this is obviously helping your child um, to develop their physical and emotional well-being and making sure that they're well prepared physically and emotionally for their for their start at start at nursery. And a big part of that is making sure that they have enough sleep before they before they particularly start in that first week. I mean, personally, I think that sleep is is really, really essential. Um, and we can see that when children haven't had enough sleep, they quickly become dysregulated. So it's really important that you embed that sleep routine um, before they start nursery and you start waking them up and putting them to bed probably a week or two weeks before the before they start nursery so they're well versed in having to get up at the time that they're going to need to get up for for nursery and making sure that you know bedtimes don't slip as uh, they continue on through through the term um, another essential thing is making sure that they have a healthy breakfast before they start nursery so they have lots of energy and they can concentrate while they're there um, and I know this third point is, is, is probably quite a tricky one, but trying to make sure that your child leaves the house in a happy mood. Um, and it might be that you try and find some time before they start school to just play a little game with them. And as I said, trying to be um, as, as positive as you can, particularly um, as you're doing that kind of leaving the house and traveling to nursery, because that will really help. And um, as I've talked about before, making sure that they're well used to drinking water and how they're having healthy snacks, because that's what they're going to be doing at nursery. OK, this next slide is about um, helping them um, to become a little bit more social before they go to nursery. And um, Maria, that's something that you that you talked about that um, with Oops, apologies. My printer going off. Um, yes, yeah, so this is about how you can help your child um, 
become more social, get used to sharing, turn taking, being around other children of the same age. And how you might do that is encouraging play dates with um, children that you know already or when they start nursery. Um, this actually tends to happen that you might swap phone numbers with, with people standing at the gates and that you can organise to go to the park together and things like that. That all really helps build those kind of friendships and the beginnings of kind of social play and learning to interact with others. Play and learn session. So that's why I was asking at the beginning of this session, um, does your child attend the children's centre? Because your lo local children's centre Offer, offers lots of um, lots of lovely universal sessions that you don't have to book for that you can just turn up to and that gives your child um, a really good start in getting used to being in an environment that's a bit like nursery so if you can go along to them um, over the summer holidays that's really good um, the second point there is about teaching your child um, to go to an adult when they have the have a problem with another child. So you might want to practice with your child saying, I need help, or I'm not sure, or they've they've got something, they've taken my toy, rather than your child, which is very, very normal at this age, becoming a bit upset when a child has taken another a toy from them. Whereas if you can practice them. Um, saying I need help or they've taken my toy that would really help um, and that last oh that last point is something that I've just already said that yeah if you can arrange lots of play dates that would be really good it really really helps so we've talked a lot about routine so making sure that they go to bed on time have a healthy breakfast um, obviously they will be exceptions um, when they've had a bad night's sleep or they're a little bit unwell and it will be important to perhaps tell the key person or the teacher on the gate when you hand them over that maybe they're not feeding themselves um, and any responsibility any extra responsibilities that you can give them at home to help build their independence so we've talked about trying to encourage them to dress themselves um, use forks and knives at, at when you're eating, anything that helps them to um, be able to cope better when they go to nursery. Um, and playing and sharing and taking turns um, is a really, really important skill that they're going to need to practice. And doing it with you at home in a safe place with familiar adults is really good. So you can read books with them, you can um, do puzzles, you can play games which involve turn taking. So um, just passing a ball back to each other is a really good one or any game, simple games where it's my turn and then your turn really helps build that kind of cooperation. Um, Maria, you've just come on. Did you want to say something? Uh, no, sorry, I just wanted to turn on the uh, oh, camera. camera. OK, so <laughs> <laughs> no um, the third bullet point is a really nice one, actually. That's about um, encouraging your child to sit cross legs, because actually when they go to nursery, that might be one of the first times when they're expected to sit cross legged and look at an adult for short periods. So if you can practice doing that, at home, that's super helpful. And it might be that you pretend to do like a little story time and you've got your child there and you've got some of their um, cuddly toys next to them acting as the little, as their peers and you pretend to be the teacher. And so they get used to being able to sit and focus um, for a short amount of time. Another thing that's really helpful um, to develop that skill, I found personally, is your local library will do lots of kind of um, sessions where children can come and listen to books being read by a librarian. And I found they were really helpful sessions to take my child to, to just get to just get them practicing sitting with other children next to them and looking up and concentrating. But that's a skill that to, um, takes time to develop um, and another thing is practicing snack time you're maybe doing this at home already where you have a little table and um, and you've got some healthy fruit snacks 
and maybe if they've got brothers and sisters they can be around the little table or if you've got friends coming around for a play day just practicing just eating in a collaborative way is, is really good and as I've talked about any activities which are led by an adult all helps your child be able to focus look at the adult follow instructions is a big one and they this these are all the skills that your child is going to need when they start um, at nursery. So the more you can practice at home and um, get them used to doing all these things, the more successful that that transition will be and the more that they've practiced and it won't be a new thing when they start nursery. Don't know why this is frozen. Um, we've, we've talked quite a lot about this already. So listening and following simple instructions, as I talked about, where where you might be that I found personally, my children absolutely loved playing schools. And when they came home from nursery, that's something that they wanted to do. And they would reenact the school, the nursery session or the nursery day um, with me. And actually, it was a really interesting way for me to hear a little bit about what was going on at the nursery, because they would show me through play through reenacting the school day, um, what was going on. And so pretending to play schools with you being the teacher or them being the teacher is, is really a good way of finding out what, what, what's been happening at school, but also practicing listening and following simple instructions. Um, so encouraging um, social behaviour. So we've already talked about that. So words, thinking about what words they can use to express themselves, just practising saying, I feel sad is a really important one. And, and you modelling that is really important. And as I said before, encouraging them to go to an adult to resolve any issues, because what you don't want is you, you, you don't want your child being at nursery and then not having the skills to be able to say, I need help or I, I can't find my coat and things like that. So you want to get them practicing asking for help. So that's about perhaps thinking about yourself as mum or dad, not always predicting what they need. So in, and, and in not predicting, it forces them to ask. And as we've talked about before, attendance at stay and play sessions at your local children's centre there will be a whole new summer program coming out over the summer holidays i would really highly recommend going to um universal sessions and if you're eligible for any of the other sessions please do go along i can't um say enough how important going along to those sessions help to prepare your child for nursery because they're quite similar to a nursery environment so the children that go to those sessions we find tend to have a smoother transition because they're well versed in sitting for snack time like they do at um, getting ready for nursery sessions they they practice sitting and looking at an adult for the hello song or when an adult shares a book um, and also they've been in an environment where they've had to share their toys. So the more you can go along to any sessions which practice those skills, that all really helps when they start nursery. Oh my goodness, I've talked so much. Um, if there's any questions or reflections at this point, I'll pause here, have a glass of water. Yes, so because uh, I've been uh, I've been going to children's centers, so I, I really believe the same thing. It helps them transitioning the transition to make it easier. Yeah, um, because it, it's exactly how you said. So they get used to the environment. They get used to to sit because, for example, my son, so he doesn't s sit for a longer time. Right. So he's always like constantly moving. And uh, on the first sessions when we went uh, at Children's Center, so he was just going around even for singing time. He was just he wasn't sitting at all. So he was like from from all the kids, he was running around. Yeah, which is totally <laughs> so not, normal, not Maria. In one place. Yes. Yeah. 
but after that slowly slowly so now yes. he's not moving that much yes he doesn't stay for all so for example there is like 10 15 minutes of singing he doesn't stay for that 10 15 minutes he doesn't sit in one place for that long but it's much less than on the first sessions when brilliant we i'm so pleased to hear that and what you're describing there is commonly what we see um is that when children first start attending they're not they're not used to sitting and listening but slowly slowly as the weeks go by and you go every week and you keep going um the children get more and more used to it and i've i've had the privilege of seeing children develop over those course of six sessions 10 sessions where i've gone on perhaps week one or week two and they were really struggling to uh, maybe sit for snack time or sit in the circle and then by the end of the course of of, of the sessions um they are able to 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 sit for uh, the goodbye songs or the nursery rhymes at the end so just as you described maria and um, with every week that goes past it's just practice like any other skill they get a little bit better so i'm really pleased to hear that maria thank you oh that's great um any any other questions or comments from anyone else before i move on Okay, we're on to the last third of, of this presentation. So this last um, couple of slides is basically how you can work with the nursery and get to know the nursery um, before your child starts. So it's really important that you make at least one visit to the school before your child starts. Most nurseries um, have some sort of procedures in place so that your child has got to visit um before they go it's, it's i've never known a nursery that just expects your child to just turn up on on day one and that's it usually there is some sort of settling in process but it does vary from nursery to nursery um so it's worth finding out what the the nurseries we call it settling in arrangements are before you start um and if they allow you to, or you can look on the school website, it's really nice if you can take some photos of the classroom that your child's going to be in or other key places in the school, like for example, the gate or the door that the child is gonna be faced with on the first day. And that's really nice because then over the summer holidays or as you're leading up to your child going to nursery, you can share those photos with your child and remind them and say, oh look, that, that's, that's where you're going. Do you remember when we went to your classroom? That's where you're going. It's really exciting. They've got dinosaurs there or they've got dollies there or whatever your child is interested in. So you can share those photos with them and you can have that discussion with them and, and make it sound as, as exciting as you can. Um, this second point, walking past the setting and pointing out to your child, is something that I did several times with my own children. Um, and that includes practising the route practicing the route and going to nursery. And I think all of this helps to familiarize your child with the nursery, which means on day one, they're not going to somewhere that's completely alien to them. If you've walked past it lots of times, you've pointed it out to them, you've shown them pictures of it, then they are really familiar with the nursery before they go. So I would really highly recommend practicing the route, walking past, pointing it out to them, saying, oh, look, there's your nursery. That's where you're going to play with your friends. Um, the third point is another really good one. If there's an open evening or this is I, I did this, actually go to your child's uh, the school summer fair. This is summer fair season at the moment. So many schools are holding summer fairs. Um, so find out via your school's website or sometimes they're actually advertised in the local area when you're when the school summer fair is and take your child along and then they get to know the playground. You might even make new friends at the summer fair. Sometimes the teachers are there and you get also get a sense of the atmosphere of the school. So actually, that's a really top tip that Aditi's put in this presentation that going to the summer fair or any event which is an open event um and usually you know they're happy to but they're happy for families to turn up um if you don't go to the school or you're due to go to the school so then they'll be very welcoming so i'd i'd highly recommend that and um, the school or nursery would 
should let you know the name of the child's teacher before you start. Um, having a photo of them is an excellent idea. You, you, there's often photos of teachers on the school website and if they allow you to take a photo of them on your settling in day, that's also really good. And that means that, you know, as I said, over the summer holidays, as you're leading up to them going to nursery, you can show your child a photo of their class teacher and say, oh, look, this is Miss Bunn, that's who your teacher's going to be, or this is um, Miss Steele, your key person, they're going to help you. And again, all of that helps familiarise your child with, with the setting that they're going to. And as you can probably tell from the, the way I've been talking, it's really important that you try and be as enthusiastic and as positive about this transition as you can. The ch Your child will pick up children are very clever they pick up on um, all the vibes that we give out so if you are um, showing that you're excited about this new and exciting new chapter in their life they will be excited too so maybe if they've gone for a settling in session um, and they played with a particular toy um, you can say oh it's really exciting do you remember the castle that you played with do you remember the big slide in the playground do you remember the sand pit so it's really important that as you lead up to your child's first day that you are talking about it really enthusiastically um so the school should give you information on this. So find out what routine of your child will be doing. Um, they should uh, they should have some sort of settling in transition evening where you find out what they're going to be doing, how their school day looks, what time snack time is, if they're staying for a full day, um, what happens in the afternoon versus the morning. Um, so find out as much information as you can. And if you feel like you're not getting that information through through um, settling in um, transition arrangements, you can make an appointment to speak to, to someone in the school to find that out. Um, and we've talked about expectations, about drinking water, sitting at the table, eating healthy food. And we've talked a lot about the importance of having a really strict bedtime routine, making sure that they're well prepared for that first day and that you've practiced that morning routine of getting up, getting dressed, eating breakfast. All of that will really help. Um, this is about sharing information with the school. Okay. So. Um, this is about how the nursery set the nursery school share information with you and how you will share information with the nursery and you should get information about this on your settling in transition um, appointments um, but if you don't get it do ask so the important thing is is um, thinking about what things you want to tell your nursery uh, the staff at nursery about your child before they start so you might want to be telling them that you know at home maybe English isn't spoken at home you might be wanting to tell them about key words that they might use at home to describe different things particularly if they're not typical words that people people use you might want to tell them about any preferences for their play um, any things that they might be a bit scared of so any key information so have a little think yourself about what information you want to share with the nursery before your child starts the, the nursery will want to know this information but they differ in terms of how they get it as I said I had a home visit where I was able to talk to the nursery teacher before my child started for one of my children um, another another my other child I was able to go in and have an appointment with a teacher without without my child there and and speak to them so there will be some sort of procedure but have a little think beforehand about what you want to share the other thing is is thinking about how they share information with you and most schools now have quite clear systems. Some of them even have apps. My school does. We have a parent mail app um, which you um, sign up to and they do most of their communicating through that app. Um, but find out how they um, will, how the school will want you to communicate with things like 
if there's been any changes at home, is there an email address um, that you email into? Um, is it OK to have a chat at the beginning or end of the day? Um, some schools are more open to this or not. Um, if drop off and collection arrangements change, how do you communicate that with the school? Um, how do you communicate if your child's been ill? Because um, on the day, usually you have to let them know. But how, how do you communicate when they're coming back and they've, they've been a bit you know they're, they're, they're okay to come back but they might be still feeling a little bit poorly you know how you might communicate that and um thinking also about how you're going to work together to develop your child's skills now most nurseries have and schools have um things in place where you have maybe twice yearly um um parents evenings where you have a chance to meet with your child's teacher or key worker and discuss your child's progress find out what those arrangements are and um, they slightly differ from nursery to nursery um, but they will have um, systems in place in order to have that communication um, Oh, I've just talked about that. So make sure your child, make sure the nursery knows about your child's routine. I've talked about that, their likes, their dislikes, their favourite toys, um, their food likes and dislikes, what kind of fruit or snack they like. Um, and this often happens is, <laughs> my children did this. So I would go in and say, my child never eats apple. She hates apple. And then, of course, when she got to nursery, she happily ate apple. Um, so be mindful that what how they present at home is not always how they present at nursery and uh, particularly in relation to their food preferences, because um, children often want to be like their peers. So when they see their their friends eating apple, actually, they're encouraged to eat apple or something like that, even even if they you thought they didn't like apples. So um, it's amazing how they learn from watching others. Um, and as I've talked about before, the importance of communication with the key person in, te in teacher and keeping that open dialogue going. Um, and the school will want to do that. And they will want to do that because they know um, that in order to resolve any issues that come up, um, that a collaborative and open communication is, is key. So be open, be, be ready to talk to your school. They will want to talk to you. Um, but keeping those lines of communication open is, is really important. Um, now, we've talked about loads of different things this morning, um, but I think it's important to hold in your head that you can't do everything at once. So you won't be able to work on everything that we've talked about today all in one go. But as actually Maria um, described earlier, like she is just working on, or well, one key thing you're working on, Maria, is toileting. Um, so it's important to think about, you know, what one, two, maybe three things you're going to try and work on before your child starts nursery. You don't need to work on all, all things at all times, but to have one or two focuses and then really think about what you're going to do to help move your child on in that area um, will really, really help but yeah, we're not we're not superhuman, so you can't do it all in one go. OK. And I think I've come to the end of the presentation. So I guess um, the thing to say now is to wish you luck on this really exciting new chapter. Um, try and be as positive you, as you can. Um, try and prepare as well as you can. And all these things really, really help to um, make it a successful transition. I've come to the end. So if there's any questions or queries or anything that you want me to go over, I'm happy to stay for questions. <laughs>